Hi folks, so today I'm just going to be doing a really quick walkthrough of what I personally do when I'm styling proteins using Brady Johnston's amazing molecular nodes. So here's just a very basic overview of the add-on in preferences. I have version 0 0.10, 0 0.4 at this very moment. Um, I also have the Atomium package installed and this is what the active space that I work in looks like. I'm going to be focusing more on the PDB section, but there's also a local file section and an MD trajectory that you could work with as well. I'm going to include a link to Brady's GitHub page where molecular nodes can be downloaded. I'd suggest going over and reading the documentation over there. I also suggest navigating over to his YouTube where he has a specific playlist that goes through each of the individual like major functions that his molecular add-on includes. There currently are six videos uploaded to this series on his YouTube channel and each and every single one has loads of information that you can take away from it to apply to whatever your specific application for this add-on would be. So, like I said before, go over to his YouTube channel if you want a more comprehensive technical aspect. I'm just going to go through my personal process here. Uh, so I'm in the PDB and I'm going to be I selected this protein because it has both an asymmetric unit and a full biological assembly, which we will get to later. So I'm going to type in the PDB number over here in this um, in this user input and download from there. And it's going to just drag the data points over from the protein data bank into our program. And I'm just going to set up my scene before I navigate over to geometry nodes and make a little animation. So I inserted my camera and I'm just going to move it around until I frame the protein in a more uh, visually pleasing way. I'm having a little bit of trouble here, but eventually I do get it. Um, and I do frame it in a relatively symmetric composition. I'm going to insert a mesh plane so that I can make this composition a little bit more visually appealing, um, give it a little bit more context. So we're not just going to be looking at a protein only floating out in empty space. We're going to make it look like it exists in some sort of uh, room, I suppose. I have just extruded the line from the very edge over there in the Z direction and I'm going to bevel that corner out so it gives it more of a, a natural look. Very seldomly in real life do you really see like straight 90 degree corners so evening that out kind of makes it a little more easy on the eyes. And I'm just going to adjust my camera until I'm content with where it is. There's a lot of futzing around in this tutorial. I don't know if you've noticed already, or even if you've ever watched any of my previous tutorials, I do a lot of futzing around. And that's primarily to make sure that um, I'm completely content with what I'm, what I'm working with. So here I'm just going to save my file and name what the output of the animation images are going to be just in case Blender inevitably decides to quit on me because I overwork my poor computer and she is not very content with me. Do note that I have switched over to cycles, which is why the, the viewport looks a bit pixelated and strange. Um, cycles tends to produce a more realistic lighting um, render to your animations. So I just uploaded an HDRI over there so I have a more interesting um, lighting setup. And now I'm ready to go with the actual add-on itself and I'm ready to style my, my protein in the way that I want to. There's several different styles that you could apply for your particular protein. There's the ball and stick, there's the stick, there's the atomic, and there's the surface that I'm using right now. There's also the, um, the ribbon, but that requires that your model has the alpha helix, like any alpha, alpha helix structure in it. Um, and those are the ones that I have at the top of my head right now. 
there are several parameters that you could play around with with the with the surface style which is what i'm just messing around with right now um, but for the most part especially since i want to maintain a majority of the detail here without bogging down my computer i just keep it at the the default values that I already set now I'm going to customize the colors of each of the individual subunits of the protein. So you're going to want to open up the node that selects for the very specific protein that you're looking at and then add in a color manual node and connect that selection node up to the selection and make sure that you check off each individual chain that you want to um, custom color. You may notice that I did not check one of the chains and it's okay because I do address it later. Um, but for now I'm going to navigate over to Coolars or Coolers. I don't know how to pronounce it out loud. Um, but it's basically a palette generator and this is a palette that I've already pre-selected and enjoy. I want to copy over the hex value into the first chain and select the subsequent chains from there. I really appreciate this website because it takes a lot of the indecisiveness in choosing colors because I get quite overwhelmed. There's so many colors to work with, did you know? Uh, but here it helps to limit um, the choices right in front of you while also maintaining a nice, pretty aesthetic. And another cool thing about this site is you can double check if a palette is accessible to people who are colorblind. So there's many different types of colorblindness, as I'm sure you may be aware, and coolars or colors, I don't know, they do a great job of showing you what each palette would look like under the different types of colorblindness. So no matter what, you can make sure that your colors are accessible to everybody who, who may see it, despite whatever um, color blindness they may specifically have. As long as it has some sort of contrast and as long as people can differentiate it, it's all good. It's all good. So for the sake of trying to keep my geometry nodes set up relatively clean, less cluttered, I just created a new group by control Ging all of my selected nodes and naming each of the individual inputs for the colors um, according by their according to their chain. So this is just to cut down on visual clutter and it's also to try to stay a little bit organized. I always have to emphasize name your stuff so that you don't lose track of each of the parameters that you want to change. So here is the fun part. We're going to build the biological assembly. So there's literally a node called biological assembly. And as soon as you input that in, the asymmetric unit, voila, becomes a full biological unit. And what's fun about this is that you can switch over from the full assembly back over to the asymmetric unit by by just changing this rotation value from zero to one. Now I know that the in-between um, shapes are not quite accurate to the protein itself, but it is still really cool to look at. Now we're not quite finished with geometry nodes, but here I just decided to add in a material over to the the background plane so that I have a little bit more scene context and I can um, more efficiently style my animation to to my liking and I know that light thing in the back is kind of distracting um, don't worry I do address it and I do fix it at some point but in the meantime I'm just gonna mess around with the camera mess around with where the protein is located just so I feel content with where a majority of this animation is going to take place. So while I'm in geometry nodes, I'm gonna drag up the very bottom um, panel so that I can have a workspace to create this animation in. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of the animation and set my rotation value to zero so it displays the asymmetric unit. I'm gonna navigate further on where I want the full biological unit to be completed and duplicate that value um, so that it stays completed and built and then navigate to the very end where 
the value is going to be zero and produce the asymmetric unit again. Just changing around the length of this animation and giving it a look through to make sure that it has the general um, assembly and movement that I want. Just I just want to make sure that the timing is visually appealing to me. If things are too stagnant for too long, um, viewers tend to become bored. You want there to be a little bit of action in between each scene in general. So I'm pretty content with the timing of the, the assembly animation. So now I'm going to add in a little bit of um, changes for the location, adding it in the keyframe at the very bottom where I want the protein to exist, raising it up to the very center and making sure that it doesn't clip through the plane because that's not a good look. But then after a certain point, I'm going to keep that same location so I can tell it to start rising up outside of the frame. And I'm going to make sure to just review that and make sure that the timing is okay and it looks like it rises too quickly for my taste so I adjust that frame over to be a little bit later. And of course this is for personal preference, just whatever movement makes sense for the, the scene or the story that you're trying to tell, um, adjust the timing to reflect that. I'm going to add in a rotation keyframe over here and then move over to um, nearly the end of the animation or you know just the end of the animation and I'm going to spin around my protein in the Z rotation and add in a keyframe there just so I can have like a kind of turntable effect on the protein and the viewer can look at every single angle of this right before it folds right back up into its single unit and floats right back up out of frame. Now this is basically the animation that I want to export. So from here it's just going to be more um, visual changes. Like first things first, I can already see that the light in the background is kind of distracting and you remember that one chain that I didn't highlight? You can see it now. It's the one that looks white and it's not given um, a piece in this pretty little palette that I, that I picked out for it. So I'm going to navigate over to geometry nodes again. Go back into that subgroup that I've created. Add in a color manual node and a um, side chain selection node and, you know, select that lone little side chain that I neglected. I feel bad about it. From there I'm going to navigate back to colors because I don't know how to pronounce it. Copy over the hex of one of the colors that I didn't use. Paste that over there. Just run through the same procedure that I have before making sure to name everything because naming everything should be just our standard here and we shouldn't try to forget it. Oh. So the next thing that I'm going to address is just the weird light fixture thing in the background. Um, that's just a result of me choosing the quote unquote wrong shader and also setting the material of the plane to be so reflective. I do like that look, but I also don't want to have that light fixture be so prominent. So what I'm going to do is head over to the world settings. Um, and I'm going to adjust the Z rotation of the HDRI so that the light fixture doesn't exist at that um, specific point where it's hitting the, the reflective background and creating that weird effect. So I'm going to let this render out again. After letting that single still image render, I'm going to head over to the compositing tab and add in a Vera node so I can see the image that we just rendered out in full. 
press V a couple of times so I can zoom out. And I'm going to add in a lens distortion node. Set the distortion to 0 0.02, nothing too large. We don't want to look like we're looking through a really weird, I don't know, alien camera or something. Usually I add in a glare node just to get a little bit of a soft halo effect going, but it didn't really do anything in this case, so just going to skip out on that. I'm going to add in a color balance node and just adjust the, the values of the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. I don't go too crazy on it because I do want there to be a little bit of realism. Make sure to connect that final node over to the composite. I just selected motion blur because it kind of adds like a, a little bit of a subtle smoothing effect to the motions. From there, I'm just going to save my file just in case anything bad happens. Um, make sure I'm saving this to PNG and not video so that if it crashes in the middle of my animation, I can start it up from whatever frame it finished. And from there, I'm just going to let it render. When it's finished rendering, through the magic of editing, I'm going to add in all of those frames that I've just created from the very beginning to the very end, add in that image strip from frame one to frame, I think it was like 200, 200 something. Now, I don't know if this is something that happens with other people, but sometimes my video is like backwards. So what I have to do is go over to video and then reverse frames. And from there, just yeah, compile it all together, and there's the final product. I do hope you enjoyed this video, even though I tackled it from a more visual and artistic um, perspective. I really do hope that you learned something new from this. If you want to learn more about geometry nodes and the specific parameters that you can play around with or the specific nodes that you can use in order to enhance your, your animation of your protein, definitely navigate over to Brady's YouTube channel. It is quite comprehensive and each of those mini tutorials is quite fun to follow along with. So yeah. I'll leave links for everything below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!